Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Excel Layouts for Reporting in Dynamics 365 Business Central. My name is Katie and I'll be the facilitator today. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question area in the control panel on the right hand side of your screen and we'll answer questions at the end. The session will be recorded and posted on our blog as well as shared with you later this week. Now, I would like to introduce our presenter today, Martin Bernardo, Solution Specialist on our Dynamics 365 Business Central team. Martin, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Katie. Good morning, everyone. So uh, just a bit about myself. Uh, I'm Martin. I've been uh, with Encore for about three years now, been doing Business Central. Uh, excited to present to you uh, how um, you, know, you could use your Excel layouts to run reports in Business Central. Uh, Microsoft uh, Office and Microsoft uh, Business Central, both being uh, products uh, that were developed by Microsoft, is seamless, gradually becoming more seamless. Um, it use, and Microsoft is now uh, trying to phase out some of their report formats and shifting more towards Word and Excel. And that means that people who are you know, very comfortable using Excel will you know, be able to use their skills more, even if, as they shift to Business Central. Um, some some folks actually are hesitant uh, when they shift to a new ERP. They think that you know that they're not they lose the value. But in fact, uh, with uh, Microsoft uh, uh, pushing more uh, Excel type of reports, uh, you know that value will stay there. So for today's presentation, uh, I want to do a quick demo on uh, how um, you could uh, use your Excel layouts. Um, actually, uh, there will be out of the box uh, layouts of Excel, but still you can tweak this uh, using your uh, skills in uh, doing tables and stuff and uh, push them back into Business Central and generate the reports uh, that you want. Um, so as a, as a uh, quick uh, overview of our agenda, what's gonna happen um, for today is um, I'll go on, I'm gonna show you how to create an Excel report um, and you'll see that uh, the data in Business Central will be uh, pushed out in that Excel report. Then you can actually replace, uh, well, tweak the report uh, to your own uh, needs and then replace uh, the out of the box standard report with your report. And then that's the report that you could um, use um, on the day to day. So, yeah, so let's jump in and uh, let me quickly show you how to do that. Okay, so for my uh, demo purpose, I'll be using uh, the Kronos demo environment. Um, and typically you would go to your, uh, that's the, uh, I've identified a particular report to work with and let's uh, use that, identify that to be the customer uh, top 10. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll need to shift out of this, and uh, I actually uh, okay. Let's switch it back to your. Uh, that's a result of my testing, and so what happens is I uh, just use my test as a default. Okay, so just to show you uh, in report layouts, and let me do that again. So when you go to report layouts, you will see there's a number of reports out here. A lot of them are RDLC. Uh, that's a, uh, you know, something that typically users don't know how to use. Um, usually we reach out to developers to modify those reports. Um, and gradually uh, Microsoft is switching out to Excel reports so that you can, uh, the users have more power in their hands without, with less reliance on the developers. So for this particular demonstration, I'd like to use the customer top 10 list as part of my demo. You see I already created a test uh, report, but let's uh, ignore that for now. Uh, this is your out of the box report for customer top 10 list. It's an RDLC report, and you can tell that it's the out of the box report when you see the extension as a base application by Microsoft. Okay, so I've set it as a default. So whenever I run the report, it will pull from this uh, report uh, layout. Okay, so let's do the customer top 10 list. Okay. And if you're familiar with the uh, report uh, uh, page view, 
uh, you can actually set your filter according to the uh, um, uh, uh, records that you want to generate. So for now, I, I don't need to filter much. Uh, there's not too many records in the system. And let's just check our top 10 list uh, for Cronus USA. Uh, let's do a preview. So this out of the box report will generate this. Okay. So it shows that you have uh, two, four, five companies uh, that show up on your top 10 uh, with these amounts. And this is your out of the box Excel report uh, showing a graph chart. Okay. So next, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, show you how to actually uh, download that copy and uh, create your own version of that report. So while well, on the uh, report screen, uh, what you're gonna do next is uh, do a send to and choose your Microsoft Excel document data only. Okay, this is the uh, format that you will need uh, when you want to tweak that report, hit OK. And what that's going to happen is uh, it's going to download onto your local. Uh, it's my number two. Let's hit save. And let me quickly open that and show you what it looks like. Give it a few seconds to load. And when you open your Excel sheet, it always defaults to uh, a protected view. So remember to uh, hit enable editing so that you could uh, work with uh, your sheet. Okay, so there are two uh, sheets in your um, downloaded report. The first is your data sheet. These are the data that's captured from Business Central. And take note that there are columns there that um, you wouldn't want to um, I'll alter that because this is the structure that uh, the report follows. Uh, and uh, you, you, this particular sheet is something you, you don't want to mess around with. Keep it there. Um, caption data sheet uh, just gives you some idea of what um, uh, metadata is being used. Okay. So now once you have your uh, data sheet, um, you can uh, use your Excel skills here and create another um, sheet for your uh, pivot table. And I've just uh, done that um, on the side. Let me close it out and let me show you an example. Okay. Let's wait a few seconds for that to open up. Okay, so, so the downloaded sheets are these two. Now this is something that you create on your end and you can create a pivot table and you know generate uh, you know, uh, do graphs, charts that uh, be, you think uh, would be uh, useful for um, understanding your information uh, and presenting them in a different way. So this is your customized uh, sheet. So what's going to happen is uh, after you've done this part, uh, you save this and we upload it into uh, Business Central. Okay. So let me close that out. So next step is to, uh, so it may, it may seem like it's a fast uh, process, but actually I just saved a, uh, an updated sheet. Um, it might take you a while, maybe 30 minutes or so to uh, do your pivot tables on that um, extra sheet. Okay, let me just bring that back. But once you're done, um, it should be good to load and I'll show you how to load that. So I'm just opening the, uh, custom report that you created again. So this is, let's say the custom report and we're going to upload that to Business Central. Okay. So again, you will go to your um, report layout. So this will be your, you know, go to, so go to your report layouts. Um, and just to show you, uh, we have report ID 111 is the customer top 10 list. Uh, so depending on the report that you're trying to tweak, it will ha you will use a different report ID for for but for this demo purpose, we're using this uh, report ID 111. Um, and and now I'd like to upload uh, the uh, report that uh, I sort of tweaked uh, and use. I'd like to use now as my standard report to replace the out of the box report. Um, so let's hit new. Okay, 
still use the same report ID. You can give your report a different name. So let's say it's my customer, still my customer top 10, but let's maybe the custom report, okay? And let's use the same description. Of course, it's an Excel report, okay? Um, now, um, here you, you might choose to have this report available in all companies. If you have more than one, uh, the system defaults to all companies. Uh, I'd recommend you keep the default setting to all companies. So you can always switch this off later on, okay? So once you hit OK, you're going to look up your uh, file. Okay, and I have it somewhere here. Or you can drag it as well. Now let me do that instead. Let me just drag it over here. Okay. Okay, maybe it's because my file is open. Let me close that file. Let me try that again. Okay, so now we can see that the custom report has been loaded. Okay, however, it's not yet the default. Okay, so at this point, I'd like to set it as a default so that whenever I run the customer top 10 list, it's gonna pull this particular report. So I click out of that, do a search for my customer top 10. And another um, pro tip, set this as a bookmark. If you're gonna do this often, you don't need to uh, search that often. So this is set it as a bookmark. So it's gonna show here at the top. So on my uh, report view, uh, report layout will show my customer top 10 custom report. If I click on the three dots, it will show the three other report versions that are in the system. Uh, the default or the out of the box report was not selected as a default, so it's not ticked off. Instead, um, we will now um, show um, my customer top 10 custom report. Okay, and let me close out of that. My other screen's blocking me. So, and let's, uh, what's going to happen here is you have the option to download. Um, you don't have the option to preview at this point. So let's hit download. And it's going to pull um, the data from Business Central uh, and uh, into the uh, report. Okay, and now it's my version three. Let's save that. Okay. And let's quickly open that. Okay, you're seeing the version three over here. So remember when we first uh, downloaded the uh, out of the box report, we only had two sheets. Now we are seeing the third sheet, which is your um, the report, uh, your custom report portion. Okay, so this is now your uh, report. Uh, and let's now show um, how that uh, changes uh, with uh, you know, uh, the data as you update that and this is central. So currently a datum has 223. Let's try to create an invoice that will uh, increase the sales of a datum. Okay. So going to customers, datum, let's create a new invoice. Okay, let's just uh, select uh, an item here. And let's change uh, the value. Okay, that's about $1,000. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it 100. Just to show. Okay. Okay, 100,000. So let's go ahead and post this invoice. Okay. No need to look into the invoice for now. I just wanted to show that uh, your uh, report will update uh, with the uh, current sales of uh, a datum. So let's run that report again. Hit download. Now it's version four. Okay. 
wait for a bit to open. Okay, that's still version, okay. Okay, so enable editing. Okay, you see now, um, earlier it was 200,000, now it's 300,000. So uh, your report has been updated with the latest data in Business Central, and yet it's still using the same, uh, you know, graph that you initially created. So uh, no need to reach out a developer, uh, no need to, uh, you know, um, wait on Microsoft to come up with a different version of the report that suits your requirement. Uh, it, this gives a lot of power in your hands where uh, you can use simple Excel skills or your advanced Excel skills to generate your report. Okay. So there is another option on looking uh, at that report. Um, um, so let's say you don't wanna download that. Instead, you just wanna uh, see it in Business Central. So, uh, but I've been facing a few issues on this today. Um, I just wanna demo it, uh, how you can go about it. So basically you can have this report, send it to, uh, if for you who are familiar with how to schedule reports, just hit schedule. And what's gonna happen is, uh, okay, uh, there you go. You can schedule this uh, top 10 list to generate, uh, let's say uh, every so often. And let's, uh, let's make my uh, next start date 10, 18. So make sure that report output is Excel. So after you've set this, it should run the next minute on my end. So the report has been scheduled. It should appear in your report inbox, inbox when it's completed. So this is where it should show. Okay, and let's give it a few seconds. Um, and while you're waiting, you can also look at uh, the queue of your reports. Uh, this was an error that I faced earlier. This is one that I just created and it's now 1018 and hopefully that shows up. There you go. So instead of downloading, it's gonna show up on your inbox. Click on that, okay. It still will download. Uh, let's see if you can open it on the preview instead. There you go. Okay, not able to get that to work at this time. However, um, instead of having to uh, go to the search the report and uh, create download, you can just click on this link instead and, it, and um, it saves you a few steps. You still need to download your report, save it and open it and you will see your version five in a few seconds after I open it on my download from my download folder. And here's my version five. Okay, so before you go ahead and try to uh, tweak your data, play around with it, you wanna enable editing. Okay. And uh, it's now showing uh, your current uh, um, top 10. Okay, so uh, that is the uh, quick demo on how to create uh, an Excel report. Um, there's a good number of other reports that you can work with. I just chose the customer top 10 uh, and uh, to show you as well how um, Microsoft has uh, been serious about um, updating uh, the reports to be more in Excel. If you do a search of Excel, uh, you will see that a lot of reports have already your Excel version. But I, what I used right now was just the customer top 10 without the Excel. Um, but then uh, Microsoft is gradually introducing uh, more of the Excel reports. Uh, um, so yeah, uh, that's all from my end uh, and be happy to address any of your questions. Katie? Thanks, Martin. If anyone does have any questions, please put them into the question area in the control panel. In the meantime, I'm going to be sharing a link to our events page in the chat. If you'd like, you can check out previous webinars or register for upcoming webinar sessions. 
I will also be adding a link where you can set your email preferences and opt in to our emails so that you can stay in the know about upcoming events and see our latest blog articles. So those will be both in the chat. All right, I don't see any questions that have come in yet. And if anybody does, um, I'll be sending you the link to this recording later this week so we can follow up then if you do have any additional questions. But if not, thank you, Martin, for the information. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Katie. Have a good rest of your day.